Hey creative people, you're watching Shiny Films. Today we'll be showing you two ways to create different kinds of text reveal animations in HitFilm Express. Today's video will be 2 out of 5 on the difficulty scale. But before we begin, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to Action VFX. Action VFX have been some of the leaders in high quality VFX for a while now, appearing in many famous TV shows and films with high budgets. But on May the 1st, something special happened. Action VFX has slashed all their prices by 50% so that people like you, who would have previously thought of these assets as a little out of reach, are now actually worth buying. These assets, I repeat, are some of the best quality assets on the market right now, and the price of them has just been dropped by 50%. Plus, there's a ton of free stuff on their site anyway, like free smoke, dust, blood, burn marks, explosion and bullet hit sound effects, and more. If you use the link in the description and check out with the code SHINYFILMS, you'll get an additional 10% off any purchases made. But that's it, I just want to give a quick shout out because that helped me before uh, with my film competition. Uh, but with all of that being said, let's get on into this text reveal animation in HitFilm. As you can see here, I'm just setting my project so you know it's completely blank. And uh, basically, it's a completely empty project. I'm just going to start by creating a new composite shot in the uh, media panel down here in the bottom left. I'm just going to rename this. The first text reveal is going to be pretty simple. We're just going to have text and a line. And the text will move up behind the line and get revealed as it moves across the line. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually create the text. Hit new layer, text, and it'll create a new text layer. We can select the size to be something like 1920 by 400, since my comp is 1920 by 180. Just select the text tool up here, and click on your text box and start typing. Actually, I'm just gonna type this. Once you've done typing, you can highlight your text and go down into the text panel down here in the bottom left and adjust your font size and everything. I'll be back when I'm done. All right, so I basically changed the font, the size and centered the text. Now I'm just going to go back into the move tool and just before we do anything else, uh, this little three button, this little grid button here called workspace, if you just click on that and select compositing, it'll give us a little bit of a bigger viewer that will be a little bit more useful when we're working with this. So I'll just keep it like that. And now in the controls panel under transform, if we adjust the anchor point, by just dragging on the Y value here, then we'll notice we're able to change the position of the text without actually changing the center point. And so this way we actually get a really good idea of where the center of the image is and we can place the text perfectly in the middle using the anchor point. I'll just go back to scale to fit and now that we've centered our text, it's time to add the plane, which will be our little line that our text will move through. Click new layer plane. And this plane, we're just going to uh, name this one I'm going to name this one uh, line and the width uh, we want it to be a little bit less than 1920 because I just want it to be uh, just about 1200 or so and the height you can choose a custom height but I'll go with something like seven pixels high and I'm just going to make it white by hitting on the white button right there and hit OK. Now you'll notice that this is a, a good line but it's a little bit short I want to have a little bit more room so I'm just going to go right click properties and we can adjust those properties again. I'm just gonna say 1300 now, and that's a bit more like it. So once we've done that, it's time to move our text into the correct position. If we just select our text, and we just grab this green arrow to move it along the Y position up and down, just move it below the line like so. And if you just go into the controls panel up here, or you can also go uh, underneath the layer properties over here, you can open up the transform in both of these ways. And this way is going to be a little bit more useful because we can see our keyframes over the time. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start keyframing the position to animate it. So just hit the circle next to position. And when you click that, then it'll activate keyframing and add a keyframe on this frame. And keyframing is our way of animation. And this keyframe will tell the, tell the text layer that at this point in time, it should be at this position and this value should be in place. If we go to one second exactly, by just uh, typing in one second in the time code up here. And we can just adjust the position like so. And when we adjust the position, what ha what, watch what happens down here. When we change the position, a new keyframe will be added. And the new keyframe um, will now change. And between the two keyframes, the value will change from one of those values to the other. And that's how we animate it. As you can see at the moment, it's a pretty stock standard animation. And I just want to make this a little bit smoother. 
This is just quite optional, but uh, I'm just gonna change it to be a little bit smoother. And the way we're gonna do that is just by highlighting the keyframes. And then in the value graph, just open up the value graph in the top right hand corner of the timeline like so, and just zoom in a little bit. If we just scroll through down here, you can see the values in action. On the X axis, just as before is the time, but on the Y axis up and down, we have the actual value of position. And you can see that the green one, the Y value here, goes straight from minus 70, straight up to minus 80, and then just stops like so. And I just wanna smooth this out a little bit because it's looking a bit weird when it just stops at the top here. So just select here, convert selected keyframes to manual Bezier in the time interpolation. And now we have two keyframes that uh, we have a more smoother curve with. And we can even adjust this curve further. So if we just uh, select these handles right here, like so, we can push and pull them. Uh, and now we get a bit of a smoother animation when it comes up like so. I'm just gonna get out of the value graph and play it back. And we can see that looks much nicer and much smoother. Now comes for the text reveal bit, and this is actually a little bit easier than you might have expected. So we're just going to create another plane now, and this plane will sit below our line, and it'll serve as a mask for the text. So just hit new layer, plane, and we can see we've still got the same values as we do for the line. So I want it to be the same width as the line, but I just want it to be a little bit higher. So I'm just gonna set like 1000 or something, I'm just going to set this to be the mask plane. It doesn't matter what color it's gonna be because it will be hidden anyway. Whoops, I might have uh, messed up the height there. I meant 1000, not 100, there we go. And I'm just going to now move this down like so until the line pops out there, just like so. And now we've got our plane there as well. And what we're actually going to do is just drag this below everything and we're just gonna hide it like so. And now we're going to apply an effect to our text to make it hidden when the plane is where it is. So just search up for the uh, set matte effect and drag it onto the new text layer. And then open up the new text layer and select the source layer to be the mask plane. And now we can see it doesn't quite work. It fills in the back, black background here and it disappears up the top, which is the opposite of what we want. All you have to do is select the blend mode to be subtract. And now wherever the plane is, uh, it'll subtract like so. So to just go through it again with you to explain it a little bit better, wherever the plane is visible, wherever there's any content on this plane here, it'll subtract those values from the text layer. And so now it'll only be visible above the line. So let's take a look now at how we can do a different one where instead of the text moving, we have the line moving. This is a little bit more complicated because we actually have to get the mask plane to move as well. So I'm just going to go into the media panel, uh, duplicate my text reveal comp by hitting Control D, or you can just hit right click duplicate. I'm just gonna rename the second one, text reveal two. Surprise, surprise. I'm just gonna open up the second one like so. And I'm just going to keep the line and I'm going to keep the text and I'm gonna keep the mask plane as well. But I'm just going to quickly just get rid of this effect just so we have uh, everything clear and I'm just going to get rid of the uh, position keyframes here, like so. And now we just have all of our stuff like before, but without movement. And so what we're going to do now is I'm just going to center the text actually, back to the zero, zero, zero position. And now we're going to animate the line. So at the top here, I'm just going to make sure it goes from top to bottom. That's just the way I wanna do it. You can also go bottom to top as well. I'm also going to do a little bit of a thing where I keyframe the scale, just because I think it'll make a really cool animation. So at the first frame here, I'm just going to hit the scale keyframe, and I'm just going to unlink the scale so we can adjust each value individually. And I'm just going to make sure that the X scale, so we can extend it or squash it in just lengthways, not on the height. I'm just going to set this to be zero, so that it's basically invisible. And then uh, about one second in, of course, we're gonna go and adjust all this stuff later anyway. I'm just going to set it to be 100%. And then two seconds in, I'm gonna keep it at 100%. So I'm just going to change the value and uh, just re-enter the value like so. And then at three seconds, I'm gonna make it back down to zero. Whoops, <laughs> zero. 
I'm just going to open up the, uh, the line plane and we can see our keyframes in action. If we open the value graph, we can get a better idea of what's going on. And now we're just going to adjust the position as well. When the scales are fully up like so, I'm just going to keyframe the position. And then at the next frame, you can also use the period or the full stop and the comma keys to go back and forward one frame. I'm just going to drag this down now to let our position be there as well. And I'm just going to select all these keyframes, convert them to manual Bezier so that we get a smoother animation. Once we've got this, uh, this kind of framework down there, I'm just going to make a little bit of, a, of an adjustment here. I'm just going to go and drag these keyframes in one, two, three, four, five, six frames, seven frames, let's say. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I hope that was right. I'm just going to drag these ones out as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that way we just get a little bit of a smoother thing because it starts moving uh, when it's scaling as well and it doesn't look so, so much like it's done on a computer. Anyway, that's just a little bit of an adjustment that I would like to make there. What we're going to do now is we're going to deal with the set matte thing again. I'm just going to go to the bit in the middle where it's roughly in the middle and the scale's at 100%. We're just going to show our handy little plane that right here. I'm just going to make sure whoops, that the plane here is in the correct position. And then we're just going to look at this none value here and we're going to select the line. Now this is the parent option. And so whatever now the line does, the mask plane will do also. It'll move with the, with the line like so, but it'll also scale with the line as well, which is actually not what we want in this instance, but we can get around it pretty easily. So first steps first, let's just hide the plane and do the same as we did last time. Set matte effect on the text and just open it up. Select the source layer to be the plane and just select subtract like so. And it works pretty well. As you can see, the text at the beginning, because the line's scaled in, it doesn't really work at the beginning, but there's a simple fix for this. When it's scaled up at 100% like so, you can just shorten the text layer so that it doesn't appear before then. And now we have our text reveal animation like so. Of course, these are some very basic, very simple setups. You could go ahead and you can create a whole ton of, the, of stuff with this simple line and set matte uh, reveal animation kind of idea. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, if you did find value from it, then please hit the like button to let others know uh, of this video. And of course, if you want more videos like this, then be sure to subscribe to my channel, Shiny Films. I make hit film tutorials like this, as well as tutorials on other kind of free software and also budget filmmaking, anything in that kind of ball game. You can follow me on Twitter at shiny underscore films if you want more constant updates than I can give here on YouTube. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Stay shiny.